Hi, I'm Steve from Two Cat Media and welcome to another video. In fact, welcome to the channel in general. Welcome, my friends. Now, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my 10 point pre flight drone checklist. Now, it's my own personal checklist that I tend to use the majority of the time, and it depends on what drone I'm using. Now, there'll be people out there that maybe haven't brought a drone yet and considering buying a drone. There'll be people that have just brought a drone for the first time, and there'll be people out there that have been flying for absolutely years, and they don't want to hear what I have to say predominantly uh, because they've got their own way of doing it, and that is absolutely fine. Now, if you've got your own little way of doing things, that's fine, but it doesn't hurt to get someone else's point of view. And sometimes, you know, maybe that odd one or odd two points might just help you moving forward in your proper preparation for your flying your drone. So without further ado, let's get on to my top 10 pre-flight drone checklist. Okay, so before we start, the first four are gonna be points that you can do maybe the day before or the night before in most cases, just to kind of preempt yourself, okay? Okay, so number one is equipment. Now this might seem very obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people actually forget stuff, you know? They're rushing around and they grab stuff and they go out the door and they do it. Now if you're flying at home, maybe outside in your garden or very nearby, it may not be a problem and you can just run and get it. But if you drove a couple of miles up the road or even further, the last thing you wanna do is driving back home for a battery or an SD card. So just make sure it's a few minutes of your time. So make sure that you got all your batteries, they're all charged up properly, because if you haven't used a drone for a particular amount of time, you may get some kind of discharge coming down, and that's the last thing that you want, especially out and about, and you're trying to film something, and you've got a low battery. You also wanna make sure that you've got the right SD card, the right kind of class for what you're doing. Now, if you're filming 4K, in general, you wanna use a class 10 card, probably like a U3, and get a branded one. You also want to check that you've got enough room on there. You might want to format it before you go. As some drone apps uh, or some drones don't like you formatting on the go and some are actually okay doing it. So all in all, just make sure you've got your batteries and your SD card and also as well, go onto your app and see if there's any kind of app updates or firmware updates by connecting your drone all together in the house the night before and it saves time the next day when you're about to start up and it says, oh, you've got a firmware available or you've got an app update. So it's best to kind of just get those out of the way the night before and so mentally you're all ready to go. Okay, so point number two two is the weather okay now the weather again might sound obvious but you can check this the day before with some free apps or free versions of the apps at least now you might know outside if it's going to rain or not and if that's the case then you're not going to be flying your drone anyway are you unless you've got a little umbrella above it and that's not going to work out good for you but what you can do is go onto an app such as uav forecast and there is other ones out there but that's what i personally use even the free version, you can get quite a lot of information out of it, up to things like 24 hours or so in advance. And if you want any further, you have to pay the premium price for that. But the good thing about UAV forecast is that you can check the wind speed and also the gusts at certain altitudes. So if you know you're going to be flying around 30, 40 or 50 meters, there's a good chance that the wind will be blowing a bit faster and possibly the gusts a bit harder uh, at that particular height. So do get into the habit of checking the weather at particular heights and it will tell you as well on that particular app and I'm sure it will on others, whether or not it's actually good to fly. And, it, and I know at the bottom it has a bit like a green bar or green sections where it's good. So by checking that, you might be able to see actually between nine and 11 in the morning, it's green and that means the wind's gonna be absolutely fine. But after that, it might be a little bit too windy for your particular drone. Okay, so point number three is know your drone's restrictions and also the area where you're going to fly restrictions, okay? So as regards the drone, different drones in different countries in different parts of the world and different aviation authorities will have different rules and restrictions for certain drones. Now in the UK, and correct me if I'm wrong here, 
Different drones such as below 250 grams will be in one tech category, above 250 in another, and I think it's above 500 or a kilogram in another. And then if it's the weight of a cow, that might be in the extreme category up there. So different restrictions have different outcomes for particular drones, such as how far away you can fly from people, buildings, etc., etc. So know your drones restrictions for that particular drone. Next, you want to use an app if you if your app that you're using for your particular drone doesn't have it, where you can check your the area where you're going to see if there's any flight restrictions. Now, again, you can use UAV forecast for this, but there is plenty of other apps out there. Now, I know on that one, you can check it. I know DJI have a dedicated app, and in that app, it tells you the restrictions as well. But in general, if you go to whatever app you're going to use, and you'll see around stadiums predominantly and around airports that there'll be restrictions or height limits, etc. So just be aware of those. There's a park near me, well, quite a way away from me in fairness, called Cannon Hill Park. And half of that park is actually fine to fly and the other half is restricted. And I think you have to get permission due to there being, a, I think it's called Edge Baston Cricket Ground, which is just over from the park. So if you didn't know that, and I didn't know that at one point, and I was actually flying my Holystone 720E over that way. I mean, it was away from the stadium, but it was in that zone. So we have to be very, very careful. Okay, and so now point number four. Now this will be the last of the first four points of the things that you can do the kind of the night or the day before. And that is check over your drone. I mean, you've already checked all the batteries and the SD card. You may as well check over the drone's propellers, see if there's any cracks or any kind of nicks in there and replace the propellers, well, in the comfort of your own home, probably even better. If you have got any kind of an issues, I will put a link up there to uh, what I did for a DJI, where I replaced the propellers, but the concept is exactly the same for most drones. So just check over your drones, connect up all of your drone and everything beforehand, just check your cameras all working fine and everything should be fine and dandy. Okay, so you've arrived on site, wherever it be, your garden, down the road, the park, the beach, wherever, and you're now arriving at point number five. Give me a high five. That's good. Okay, so for point number five, it's about finding a suitable area that for your takeoff and your landing. Now you might think, well, I can just take off over there, and you may well be able to, okay? But check and have that mental awareness of yourself and of people around you. If there's kids playing around and you haven't got any propeller guards on, well, even if you have, you just wanna be very, very careful and try and go somewhere where you are kind of a bit more isolated if possible. It depends on your experience, okay? Now, some drones, you're just gonna fly around yourself and you're just gonna be very, very careful, okay? Because those propellers can still cause a little bit of damage and come quite sharp, even on these toy drones. So be aware of other people and buildings and dogs and cats and birds of prey, dinosaurs. Be aware of all those things and then find yourself a nice level area and put down a bit of cardboard if you need to, if you've got long grass or if there's kind of dusty area or gravel, just so you protect your drone and also protect the propellers as well. So find a suitable area. Okay, so number six. Yeah, six. So number six is set up everything, okay, there and then. So put the battery in your drone, turn that on. Hey, how you doing, baby? All right, don't get weird. Just turn on the drone, connect your app up to the drone as well via the Wi-Fi, put on airplane mode, make sure you got your SD card in there. Just make sure it's all turned on and ready to go. Okay, so point number seven is looking for sun. Is, and it will be looking for some if you follow this point. Because a lot of people just go and fly, boom, gone. And what you want to be doing, I'm showing off my muscles here, aren't I? Yes, yeah, so I can tell. So point number seven is about checking your parameters, your safety settings, etc., within the app predominantly. So for those of you that haven't got an app, you probably won't need to do this particularly. But for those of you that have, you will want to. Now, I say this because when you have an app update or a firmware update, if you're lucky enough to get one for your drone, then what will happen is on the odd occasion, it does happen, 
is certain things or everything can be reset to factory settings within the app. So if you, if you have set up particular settings for distance and return to home, etc., then you might want to reset those. So have a look through on some drones like the DJI Mini 2, etc. They have a section for safety on the safety section where if you lose signal, you can choose if you want to descend or hover or return to home. And for the most cases, most people will return to home. But if you're flying through a forest and doing some kind of a cinematic look, then you may want to set it to hover. Now, not every drone has that option, but if it's there, just go through, and you should know your drone anyway, but just go through all the different settings, okay? You wanna check your return to home altitude, your distance, and your height. Now, for the height, at the very most, you wanna set it to the maximum distance, which is allowed by your particular country. In England, I think it's 120, well, no, it's 120 meters. Is that about 400 feet, is it? So yeah, I will set it no higher than that, but at times I might wanna set it to 100 or 80 or 50, it depends where I'm flying and what drone I'm using. And then I've got my distance. If I wanna keep it in a particular range, I might keep it within 100 or 200 or 500 meters or a kilometer or two, or I might set it to no limit whatsoever. And then finally, you also, well not finally, but you wanna make sure that your return to home is set to what you need it for on that particular day. And if you're not sure, I normally preset mine to a 50 meters of standard and whatever the equivalent that is. I think it's 149 feet. I might, tell me if I'm right in the comments below. Oh, oh yeah, is that right? So yeah, about 149 feet, give or take. Um, so, and then when you go up in the air for the first time, if you notice that the direction that you want to go is maybe there's something obs obscure there and, and going to block it and you might hit it, then just set the return to home and bring it back down if you have to and set the return to home to maybe another 20 or 30 meters above that. Okay, so just set it to what you need on the day. But overall, just go through all your settings for the very first time prior to your first flight just to make sure that nothing has been tampered with and that you are familiar with everything on the app and also the controller as well. Okay, so point number eight is calibrate, calibrate. Oh, okay, that's eight. Calibrate, calibrate, eight. You get that? Calibrate, eight. Okay, now a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, I know this, Steve, I know this, but how many times in Facebook groups or forums or comments on videos that people say, yeah, um, I crashed my Mini 2 today, or I crashed my XYZ drone today, and I forgot to calibrate it. It happens, okay? Now some drones, you don't need to calibrate them every single time, and some, well, for some, it's probably just best to do it every single time. You know your drones, and if you're not sure, well, just calibrate it. You, ha you normally will have two types of calibration and you have a gyro calibration which most drones should have whether it's a GPS or not and that will be you put it on a nice flat level surface and all the different three or six axis it is on there it will kind of make sure that's all kind of level for you so when you fly off you should be fingers crossed level and then you have your gyro compass calibration as well, or whatever it's called, I, I've, it's off the top of my head, what's it called? Is it gyro calib compass calib? Well, we're gonna say your compass calibration, okay? Now that is where, for a GPS drone, where you normally you twizzle it around horizontally three times, and then you point it up or down and twizzle that round three times as well. And then it kind of just calibrates the compass basically, yeah? So overall, Make sure that whatever amount of calibrations you've got on your app or, or directly on the sticks, you can do certain com configurations, just check your manual, that they are done prior to the very first flight and save yourself a bit of heartache on the off chance that there's some kind of interference or that your drone flies away into the sunset alone for the rest of its life. Sad. Okay, so point number nine, that's right. That is definitely right, nine. Yes, hide that one away. Nine is GPS satellites. So for the, those of you that haven't got a GPS drone, or you're not gonna be flying a GPS drone, you've just not your nine, it's a nine point 
pre-flight checklist. Congratulations. Well done, sir. So if you have got a GPS drone, come a little bit closer. Okay, so I think we can all agree on this, can't we? Come on, we can all agree. Let's all be friends. Let's, let's hug this out, okay? That you want to be connected to as many satellites as possible. Yes. So the first thing you want to make sure that you're doing is make sure that the GPS is switched to on, okay? And that you are connected to at least the minimum amount of satellites that your particular drone is required before it flies off for safety reasons, okay? I normally get that minimum and add a two or three to it at least, okay? And I normally try and go around the 12, 13, 14 mark if that's entirely possible. Uh, the UAV forecast does say about how many satellites are available as well generically and how many can be connected to, so that can give you an idea as well at particular times of the day. So that's always something to look out for. Now you might think, ah, oh, this, is, this is gonna take forever, this is gonna take forever. But you know when I've got, I'm just looking at the thing here, you know when you get to point number six, okay, and you set everything up when you're on site, is once everything's set up and you've turned your app on, and then you go into point number seven where you're checking all your different settings and that, your GPS is gonna be on at that point, okay? And by the time you've, you've checked all your settings and you've done your calibration, that's gonna be about a minute to a minute and a half, maybe two, it depends on how slow you are doing it and you're at how, how much you wanna do it all nice and perfect. And that's fine. And then by the time you get to step number nine, you should have the required amount of satellites easily, okay? So, but just be wary that you do have the right amount of satellites for the flight, okay? The more, the merrier. Okay, so point number 10. Yes, 10, high five, we're done, we're done, we're nearly done. Okay, point number 10, and they can go and have your lunch. Absolutely banging and perfect. So point number 10 is take off. Yeah, no, take off your, don't take off your clothes. Ron, keep them on. Put, the, put them back on, that's it. Right, so point number 10 is take off. But please stop. Don't, whatever you do, don't fly just yet. Just give it a few seconds, just five to 10 seconds, okay? That's all I'm asking of your time, please. All right, this seems so, like maybe you don't want to, just you're so much of a rush, you've done all these other nine points or eight points if you haven't got a GPS drone. But just, if you haven't got a GPS drone, just take off, let it hover for about five to 10 seconds and just adjust the trim if it needs it. And just give it a few seconds just to watch it and see how it reacts, okay? Sometimes there can be something wrong with a propeller and you, and you just haven't realized, and it can be a bit fluttery, and then you can bring it down and fix that issue. And if you have got a GPS drone, take it up a few feet, just about chest to head height, and just let it sit there, observe it, make sure it's okay, and at that point, after a few seconds, if there's no issues visually, then just take off and enjoy. And that is it, absolutely Amazing, thank you very much for watching the video. That is my 10 point pre-flight checklist for you drone users out there. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, then give it a big 10 point or two point thumbs up, yeah? And if you've got any comments or anything that you want to add to my 10 point checklist that maybe I've forgotten about or maybe you haven't elaborated on, then please feel free to put them in the comment section below. And if you are new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. We're on about just over 850 subscribers at the moment at the point of making this video. And I'm just so excited about getting to that thousand subscriber mark so we can start doing more and more with the channel with you guys in mind. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, I'll see you on the next video. Now here, there should be a video already about here and YouTube recommends that you watch that one next. So if it's one of my videos, then I recommend you go and watch it. If it's not, just switch off. That's it. You don't need to worry about anything else. Go and have, have your lunch, okay? Until the next video, stay safe and drone on.